Hello, my name is David Green from Integrated Adaptive Applications, Inc. And in this video, I'll give a short ex explanation and demonstration on the Frequency Modulated Continuous Wave Detection Radar. Um, this system relies on two software foundations to operate. The first is GNU Radio, which is used to control the ES Research N210 USRP for sample calibration uh, and for sample acquisition. The second is Python, which will be used for image processing and a live GUI. Before we start, um, I've written a small script here that'll go ahead and set up my network parameters. Um, so in this case, these two lines, 6 and 7, set up my Ethernet interfaces 1 and 2. Um, in this example, I have two USRPs that I use here in the lab. Uh, however, you only need one to execute the demonstration. Um, the next two lines here will set up my read and write buffers for the networking interface. And then these last lines here will go ahead and create a temporary RAM disk. Um, you should probably shorten this or extend it depending on how much free RAM you usually have. Um, but the file we are going to be using will only be a couple of megabytes, so something smaller would be perfectly adequate. What this will do is it will create a directory called RAM disk in our temp folder in Ubuntu. Um, we can go ahead and uh, drag and drop files into this just as we would any other file or folder in the system. Um, however, this is written and read from directly in RAM. So it's much quicker and much easier for GNU Radio to access and utilize. To begin, uh, here's my flow graph in GNU Radio. I have my system variables up here, and this sets things such as the sample rate for the USRP, the carrier frequency, um, the gains for the TX and the RX, uh, and then the future LFM parameters that I'm going to have. Now, this is the start of the flow graph. I have the LFM waveform stored in my RAM disk. Um, and it's a file that I'll continuously repeat. This file is throttled at 10 million samples per second, and then it's sent to the USRP for transmission. Um, likewise, here is the, uh, where the USRP streams are received into my flow graph, and these samples are also coming in at 10 million samples per second. Now before I can use the samples, the system needs to be calibrated. I go ahead and skip a designated number of samples, which is about a half second's worth, and then branch out to a virtual sync and then a variable delay block. The virtual sync sends the samples to this part of the flow graph, which I call the calibration method. This is, in theory, a matched FFT filter, and I'm attempting to find the maximum index of the resulting filter, which I can directly relate to the sample delay between the transmit stream and the receive stream. So, let's see. Here, the samples are delayed from the transmitter and receiver, and they are formed into separate arrays using the stream-to-vector blocks. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep one in every 60 of these blocks, so this way we periodically calibrate about every second. It goes through about 72 blocks a second, so just under every second. We're going to go ahead and take the FFTs of these arrays separately, perform a conju uh, complex conjugate multiplication, and then perform an inverse FFT. We'll take the complex to magnitude, so we're just taking the, uh, the magnitude of, of that result, and then using this custom block, we can go ahead and find the index of the maximum value in that array. That's going to be inspected using a probe, which assigns it to a variable, just as any other variable we had up at the top, or any other variable in Python that you would use. So I take that number, and I use it right here in my variable delay block to control the receive stream so that it matches the transmit stream. I then dump an additional half second worth of samples uh, just to ensure the system is synchronized at this point, and then perform a complex conjugate multiplication of the first stage or for the first, uh, first stage of the range Doppler imaging. The result is sent to a virtual sync, and that syncs it all the way down here to this part of the flow graph. So Basically, this part of the flow graph is responsible for making sure data is exported properly out of GNU Radio into our imaging application. Um, first, the samples are downsampled by a factor of 2 to the 14th. Uh, the samples are then bundled into an array, and this array is related to the size of the range Doppler image we're going to be looking at. In this case, it's 512 elements. Now, there's no native support for complex numbers or complex variable types um, using a UDP protocol or network protocol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break apart the real and imaginary uh, elements of this complex number into two separate floating point streams. Um, and then that is put on the UDP sync, which will go ahead and make our data available on a UDP port 9330 with a payload size of about 4,000 uh, kilobytes, or 4,000 bytes. 
and that'll make it accessible for any application or any other computer in the network to go ahead and use these samples. So we're going to go ahead and start the flow graph by clicking the execute button up here. I'll drag this over here so you guys can see it fully. And we see that it started up. And now I'm going to go ahead and load up Genie and run my Python script. All right, great. So we'll see this is running now. And let me just make sure everything's dragged over here. Um, so there's a lot here, uh, so let me demonstrate or explain before the demonstration. Um, this upper window is displaying a range Doppler image, where range is on the y-axis and Doppler is centered at the x-axis. The first range bin will appear down here at the bottom and move upward, so this first row of blocks. On the bottom, we have a normalized magnitude view of the first range bin for Doppler. The x-axis is misaligned and it should start out at negative 37 hertz and go to positive 37 hertz. But right now it's just the size of the FFT. But you can clearly see the DC subtract is, is working very well. Um, in fact, I can zoom out on this and uh, it's working very well. It updates every second so I can't really get a good grasp of it, but there we go. So on the right side here, um, I can go ahead and set how many FFT points that I'd like to take. So right now there's 64 points for Doppler and 8 points for range. Uh, this right here is a multiplier. So if I increase this to 2, what happens is it'll zero pad the FFTs to go from 64 to whatever this multiplier is. So for Doppler, it's 64 now. If I change this to 2, there'll be 128 points for Doppler and 16 points for range. If I go ahead and change it to 4, there'll be 256 points for Doppler and 32 for range. And you can see that this image is kind of getting a little bit more fuzzy uh, as there are more points introduced. Now, I'm, I'm not increasing the resolution, I'm just zero padding the, the FFT, just for viewing. Um, so we'll go ahead and bring it to one. Now, the reference level is controlled right here. And this is basically the maximum point viewable in the image. Um, in this case, it's zero dB since it's normalized. Um, this one right here is the lower range, uh, or my dynamic range of the image that I'd like to see. So I'd like to start at zero decibels, and I'd like to go down three decibels. So just these very, very top peaks on the graph. Now down here you can see my frames per second, which is how often I'm updating the image, and that's determined by how frequently I'm getting samples, or a complete sample block from GNU Radio. I can also see the mean and the max in decibels of the radar image that I'm, I'm making. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stand up, and I'll stand up right next to the antenna. Kind of see a little spike there. And I'm going to go ahead and start moving away, and you will go ahead and see the spike shift over to the left side, indicating negative Doppler, that I'm moving away from the device. I'm standing still now, so it kind of normalizes out. You can still see a little bit of movement. Just me waving my hands a little bit. And I'll go ahead and start walking towards the device, you can go ahead and see that, that really quick uh, peak there on the right. Again, I'll move back a little bit faster, and forward. All right. So we have some issues with, uh, with data rolling over, and it looks a little bit funny. We're still working out some stuff with this imaging application, but the data is live and it's streaming. And um, so we have some improvements we're going to make this week, uh, but that's all I have for now. Have a great day. Thanks.